Welcome to Save Your Sanity, help for handling hijackles, those difficult, toxic, and often disturbing people in your life. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I'm here for you. You'll get the insight, skills, strategies, and support to stop tolerating verbal and emotional abuse, whether it's happening now or it happened to you in the past, maybe by a parent, partner, ex, relative, or even a co-worker. Time to take life back, to recover and to rediscover you, your values, dreams, desires, and realize them in healthy ways in healthy relationships. I'm so glad you're here. Hello, we're going to do something a little bit different today on today's episode. In fact, I'm going to even tell you a story because today we're going to talk about some ways of being in the world that you might not recognize right away. In fact, you might not even want to recognize because they pull on your heartstrings so much. And that's the intention. The intention is to keep you feeling sorry for them, to keep you feeling guilty that they're not happy, to keep you always taking care of them, always having them top of mind. And all the while they're telling you about how sad their life is and how nobody cares about them. So yes, I'm talking about covert narcissists today. And you may know a few and they are entangling. They will get their grip around you because you're a good person and you want to help and you have empathy for them and you have sympathy for them. And you think that you can be a good influence on their lives and you get hooked. So I'm going to start with a story today, and then I'm going to explain to you how to recognize these covert narcissists for what they really are, so that you can be wise when you realize that this is actually what's going on. So now let's listen to today's story. Enjoy. Relax for a minute and just think about this story. I want to present it to you today to talk about something that we really need to recognize and maybe this will help. This is a story from very long ago from Norway. Once upon a time, there were three billy goats who were to go up to the hillside to make themselves fat and the name of all three was Gruff. On the way up was a bridge over a cascading stream they had to cross, and under the bridge lived a great ugly troll with eyes as big as saucers and a nose as long as a poker. So first of all came the youngest Billy Groat Gruff to cross the bridge. Trip trap, trip trap went the bridge. Who's that tripping over my bridge? roared the troll. Oh, it's only I, the tiniest billy goat gruff, and I'm going to the hillside to make myself fat, said the billy goat with such a small voice. Now I'm coming to gobble you up, said the troll. Oh, no, pray don't take me. I'm too little. That I am, said the billy goat. Wait a bit till the second billy goat gruff comes. He's much bigger. Well, be off with you, said the troll. A little while after came the second billy goat gruff to cross the bridge. Trip trap, trip trap, trip trap went the bridge. Who's that tripping over my bridge? roared the troll. Oh, it's the second billy goat gruff, and I'm going up to the hillside to make myself fat, said the billy goat, who hadn't such a small voice. Now I'm coming to gobble you up, said the troll. Oh no, don't take me. Wait a little till the big billy goat gruff comes. He's much bigger. Very well. Be off with you, said the troll. And just then up came the big billy goat gruff. Trip trap, trip trap, trip trap, trip trap went the bridge. For the billy goat was so heavy that the bridge creaked and groaned under him. Who's that tramping over my bridge, roared the troll. It's I, the billy goat gruff, said the billy goat, who had an ugly, hoarse voice of his own. Now I'm coming to grobble you up. 
Well, come along. I've got two spears, and I'll poke your eyeballs out of your ears. I've got besides two curling stones, and I'll crush you to bits, body and bones. And that's what the big billy goat said. And then he flew at the troll, poked his eyes out with his horns, and crushed him to bits, body and bones, and tossed him out into the cascade. And after that, the billy goat went up to the hillside. And there the billy goats got so fat they were scarcely able to walk home again. And if the fat hasn't fallen off them, why, they're still fat. And so, snip, snap, snout, this tale's out. Hello. So, the story. You might wonder, why am I telling you that story today? Well, I've been giving a lot of thought recently to this little talked about or less talked about area of covert narcissists. They're kind of under the radar. They pull at our heartstrings. They're experts at making us feel guilty. And we seem to be drawn by compassion to think that we could help them. We're not as offended by them. We're annoyed by them, but we're not as offended by them. So I wanted to use this old, old story of the three billy goats gruff to, to recognize the troll as the covert narcissist. It's under the bridge. It's sitting there waiting for someone to transgress, someone to trespass, someone to go over it. And when somebody walks over it, which is a natural thing to do, to walk over a bridge to get to the other side, the troll is saying, oh no, you don't have the right to do that. I'm going to gobble you up. But the troll, nobody knew they were there because it didn't look like there was a troll under that bridge. And so you keep forgetting that there's a troll under that bridge. And what is a troll in Norse mythology? Well, it's an isolated being that's rarely helpful to humans. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Long, long ago, a troll was an isolated being who is rarely helpful to humans. Now, they can do good works. We all know covert narcissists will do good works and they'll talk about it. And then when they get praise for it, they'll pretend they don't want any praise. But a troll nowadays on the internet is a person who posts inflammatory or extraneous or off-topic messages in the hopes of provoking an emotional response, and then they take no responsibility for it. They'll just poke the bear and poke the bear and poke the bear and get their laugh and walk away. So we have it from ancient times, and we have it now. And narcissists in general are very territorial. But covert narcissists are particularly territorial in, of course, a very covert way. They're kind of hiding under the bridge, waiting to gobble you up. And you keep thinking, oh, that poor thing, it lives under a bridge. So let's talk a bit about covert narcissists today. So you can get some sense. You, you probably have an, an idea of overt narcissists, the grandiose, the delusional, the my way or the highway, the I rule the roost, all of that. But these others, these covert narcissists, they're a little bit different. And Yes, narcissists are attention seekers and they're manipulators, but some of them are not openly arrogant and uh, openly manipulative. They're very covert. They're kind of hidden. And so a covert narcissist is usually an introverted narcissist. Um, and they're very highly skilled. They're, they hide a lot of the obvious narcissistic traits that we know about extroverted narcissists. But Covert narcissists aren't more dangerous. They're just harder to spot. Now, Dr. Craig Malcolm, he wrote a book called Rethinking Narcissism. And he said that what's different about covert narcissists is that because they're introverted, they don't advertise their inflated egos. Because they're introverted, they don't advertise their inflated egos. 
Now, know the difference between an introverted and an extroverted person. It's not the life of the party versus the wallflower. An extroverted person is a person who gets energy by engaging with other people. So they, they go and they get energy by taking it from other people. An introvert is a person who knows they only have so much energy and they guard that energy from being taken. So that's why an extrovert can go from party to party to party and an introvert goes to a party for 20 minutes and wants to go home. So you can see the difference between introverted and extroverted narcissists because an extroverted narcissist is going to take over. They're going to rule the roost. They're going to tell people how it's going to be. They're going to manipulate covertly and overtly. They're going to say, oh, well, of course you want to do that. You want to make me happy, don't you? And they have that assumption where an introverted narcissist says, no one ever makes me happy. Nobody ever cares what happens to me. Nobody ever lets me do what I really want to do. It's always been that way. So you see, the introversion is the poor me story, the sob story, and the extrovert story is the proud story. Let me tell you how great I am. And we begin to see those differences. And they're very, very important because covert narcissists are extremely sensitive and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, yes, it's okay to feel hurt. It's okay to to wonder if you're all right. I mean, these are natural, healthy things, but when they go too far, they are not healthy. And covert narcissists have a very heightened sensitivity to things. They don't like getting criticized at all. And when you're a narcissist of any kind, you just can't get your head around the fact that somebody would find something wrong with you. I mean, how could that possibly happen? But the overt narcissist is going to say, how dare you? And the covert narcissist is going to say, nobody loves me. So narcissists, of course, believe that they're they're absolutely perfect and there is nothing wrong with them. Um, and covert narcissists believe, too, that the world revolves around them. But the only difference they have is they won't show how deeply affected they are. So instead of going ballistic, absolutely making a terrible scene, they'll run that criticism over and over and over in their mind. And then they will get, what, passive aggressive about it. Yes, covert narcissists are even more passive aggressive than other passive aggressive people. And so that's a big deal. We have to really understand that, that that passive aggression comes from their playing over and over. You, the world is a terrible place. You done me wrong. And um, they, they are going to continuously mull that over. And in the mulling of it over, their way to get back at you is to be passive aggressive. So another thing that they do is they they tend to be kind of, Oh, more observant. Um, you have to be a little more observant to actually realize that they have this sense of superiority because they're sometimes so nice. Um, they seem to be listening to you so carefully and, and taking it all in and they kind of fool you. It's not because they're genuinely interested in you, but they're finding ways to judge you. So they like to listen more than they speak, even though they're not all that interested in what you say and they're not going to relate to it or care about it all that much. But they're looking for power over you and listening to you. Where an overt narcissist will just not listen. I mean, who cares? But a covert narcissist is much more likely to do that. And then they will just be a little more subtle. So they roll their eyes, they're dismissive, they, you know, grunt and groan, oh, there she goes again, or, oh, I've heard that before, um, and they sigh a lot, but they don't speak out, and and they're they're kind of under the radar, so that's why you might miss them, and they interact in nonverbal ways a lot more than an overt narcissist would, so these are things that you might not think about being narcissistic, 
You know, maybe you just think they're quiet or maybe you think they have low self-esteem. Another thing that they like to do is that makes them different from overt um, narcissists is overt narcissists will say you always and you never. And, you know, they, they project their overt narcissists project their deepest fears on you and say that you are the one who has that fear. You are the one who's doing what they wish they were doing. But the covert narcissist has it a little differently. They still involve projection, but their projection is about, well, you won't let me. I've never been able to. Everybody has always thwarted me from. I've never had a chance to fully express myself. I've always been held back. It's always had to been what you wanted first. They have a need to be hurt to be left out, to be unwanted. And they'll arrange it to make sure that that keeps happening. And then they will play on you to keep you from doing what you want to do because you feel guilty that they haven't been able to do it. And so they tear and wear you down that way. And so instead of being the bragger shirking responsibility, they underplay their value and they become very passive aggressive. So trolls, you know, under the bridge, waiting to gobble you up, um, are quiet about it until you make noise on their roof. And so this self-deprecating nature that they have, they kind of appear humble to the world. You know, wouldn't say anything, always quite pleasant. So they fool people. They do have the ability to express sympathy, especially when they want to understand some, when they can understand, let's say more than want to, that they can understand what's going on with someone else. So if they've had the experience, for instance, they can express sympathy because they understand perhaps being ill. And so they have genuine sympathy for somebody who is ill. But Generally, they don't have a great interest in your feelings. They don't have a great interest in you. They're very consumed by what they don't have, what they're not getting. And they feel very entitled to have that something, but they're going about it in a covert way to get it. So they're, they have a surface interest in other people, but they don't really listen. They're just trying to stay away from the pain. And covert narcissists, they want a one-sided connection. They want you to give them what they need, and they value you for giving you what they need, and they devalue you because you won't, because you don't understand them, and you won't give them what they need. Is this beginning to sound familiar to you? This is very sneaky stuff. This is the troll under the bridge, okay? So a covert narcissist will act in a modest way, but they'll get themselves associated with an organization or get high up in their career or find some way to be significant in a church or outside organization. And so by superiority, their superiority rather, will come by that association, they won't say, I'm all that. They'll say, well, because I am part of this, I am all that. And so that's where they get a little sneaky again, because, well, look how well I've done. All those people thought that I should have this position. So I guess by association, I am all that. And trolls, Strangely enough, because they live in the darkness and they like to hang out with people who are in the spotlight because they like the reflected glory. You know, when I created the term hijackals, that's my term for the relentlessly difficult people who hijack relationships for their own purposes, these ones we're talking about, and then relentlessly scavenge them for power, status, and control. Well, this is the status part. Trolls like to hang out with people who are in the spotlight so they get the reflected glory. I remember dating such a person, and when we would go anywhere that was on his territory, somewhere for his work or somewhere that he was known, he would always introduce me, not as my friend Roberta or in some casual way. He would always say, I'd like you to meet my friend, Dr. Roberta Shaler. 
And I thought, isn't that odd? And I said to him, why don't you just introduce me as Roberta? Oh, no. And it wasn't until later that I realized that this reflected glory that he had because he didn't feel good about his education. He wanted to poach mine. And by association, he wanted to have that reflected glory. So that's one of the signs of a covert narcissist. Fortunately, that was a long time ago. But a covert narcissist will blame everyone for what he or she hasn't achieved. So it's everybody else's fault. Much like everything is the fault that a overt narcissist finds, but a covert narcissist blames everyone for what he or she has not achieved. And they really hate themselves, but they won't admit it. And that's the really sad part about it. Because that is a possibility that they could change, but they're highly critical. They're highly critical of themselves and therefore highly critical of everyone else. And then they blame everyone for what they haven't achieved. So therefore, it is a no-win situation. So how did they demonstrate this? Well, I mentioned earlier that they will watch and they will become passive aggressive. They won't act out overtly. And that's because they honestly believe that they're unrecognized geniuses, um, that they're just the world has bypassed them. They've been overlooked and they, they have that, that feeling and therefore they're angry. There is a deep anger, but what do they do? Well, here's another way you can think about it. They do what they want, when they want, and then they make themselves look like victims. Does that ring true for you? They do what they want, when they want, and yet they still make themselves look like victims. They come back to pull at your heartstrings. And they love to tell their stories of misfortune and abusive childhoods and battles with addiction. And that really sucks in the empaths. And and you as a good person go, oh, that's so terrible. And you're, you're drawn. You understand. You feel for that person. And so you, you, you keep thinking that maybe you can help. Maybe you can nurture. Maybe you can nourish. Um. That's, that's a logical, healthy response, but unfortunately you're dealing with an unhealthy person, so it's not going to help, and you are going to feel more and more annoyed and frustrated and resentful and put upon, and it's really difficult. And you need to know that the narcissists of any stripe, covert or overt, have no intention to change. They don't know another way to be. They don't really want to know another way to be. Some of them do. Every now and again, we'll get a person who says, I recognize all this happened to me. I recognize what I'm doing. I really need help. But it's not very common. Because in order to say I need to change, I'd have to recognize that I'm doing something that's not really okay. And it's very hard for a hijackal of any stripe to recognize that what they're doing is not really okay. So they find ways to justify their own abusive behaviors of other people because their emotions are paramount, not yours. Yours don't count. It's how they feel that really matters. So covert narcissists really love the silent treatment. What could be better? Covert, under the bridge, troll, waiting to get you. The silent treatment. I'll make you come down here under the bridge and find me. I'm not coming up there. You come down and I'll be waiting down here to gobble you up. So they have a high contempt for other people. And they they really, really do hide out. So I hope these things have helped you to understand that maybe that person in your life who's always tearing at your heartstrings, who's always sort of telling you stories that make you feel like, oh, you poor thing, or that you think that maybe there's something that you should have done and therefore maybe you have some guilt. Now, some of you have heard me say, I don't believe guilt is an emotion. I believe guilt is a verdict. You either did or didn't do something. So I really advise you not to hang out any time feeling guilty because I don't really think that that's, that's wise. But 
a covert narcissist wants you to feel badly. They want your heartstrings to constantly be resonating and playing their song. And so you can get quite taken in, in fact, sucked in, if you don't really understand all this, because they don't do all that well at forming relationships. And now they're in a relationship with you, and and they want you to fully appreciate their presence, but they don't know that that's what they want so much, so they're acting in these covert ways. And they they want to be noticed they really want to be noticed but then they're not sure they should be noticed and that gets very very confusing and they demand so much and yet they give so little it's really really troubling so i know that these things can really be helpful to you to know how to recognize these covert narcissistic behaviors I hope you'll join me on my weekly live stream on YouTube, Monday nights at 6 p.m. All you have to do is go over and subscribe to my channel for relationship help. I look forward to talking with you soon. If I can be of help to you, go to my website for relationshiphelp.com. Watch out for those covert narcissists. They are hiding under the bridges waiting to jump out and offer to gobble you up. I'm so glad you spent this time with me today. I hope you heard something that touched your heart and empowered you to move forward. You can have the life and relationships that you most want, and that begins with you within you today. I'm always here for you. Life can get better, and you heard that from me, the Relationship Help Doctor. I'm Roberta Shaler, and I work with clients throughout the world through video conferencing. We can talk. So learn more at forrelationshiphelp.com, F-O-R Relationship, H-E-L-P.com, or visit me on YouTube at 4 Relationship Help. Join me for next week's show.